What's up guys? Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at metal roof repainting and I've got Chris from Edge Facade Restoration. Thanks so much, Chris, for being here. Today we're talking about the technical side of metal roof renewals and the details of what a professional commercial company does every step along the way. So Chris, talk to us about you know who you are, what your company is, and give yeah, us a little context Absolutely. Here. Um, my name is Chris in Corvaya, and I represent Edge Facade Restoration. Uh, we specialize in architectural metal restoration. Uh, today, specifically, we're here to talk about metal roof restoration, uh, which is just a piece of the overall uh, residential and building envelope um, that we take a look at. Um, one of the primary things we do for uh, customers and clients is one, we inspect and, and look at the existing condition of architectural metal uh, features, uh, write reports to identify uh, existing service life, remaining service life, um, and the overall condition uh, of those coating systems and the metals that uh, are there. And then we also provide uh, uh, pricing and budgets and are able to actually uh, provide the labor and installation of new coating systems to extend the service life of those architectural systems as well. Awesome, and we did a couple other videos earlier about um, DIY repainting your metal roof as a homeowner and how to know if you wanna replace or repaint your metal roof. But right now we're talking about technical metal roof repainting from a commercial side, the commercial company. So Chris, what is your first step you know, at Edge you know, when you're inspecting a new project that you need to uh, take a look at? Yeah, so ins inspecting is number one. Um, you know, a lot of contractors will look at a project and say, I'll, I'll estimate it, I'll bid it, and here's your price. But you know, the reality is when it comes to architectural metals, you have to take a deeper look into, like I said earlier, what are the existing conditions? What's the existing service life that remains of the system that's there? Um, and then actually analyze those. And so the way we do that at our firm is uh, we have NACE uh, coding inspectors, which is the National Association of Corrosion Engineers. Um, all of the coding inspectors are able to analyze these architectural features and then make recommendations of repair. And so we look at something, we physically inspect it. We try to understand, is there surface corrosion or surface rust that exists? Uh, we then use tools to uh, measure the coating thickness uh, of the system that's there, um, which gives us a good feel for uh, how much exposure to the elements has, uh, has the product had. You know, how much UV attack has it gone through? Uh, how much wind and water and rain has it seen as well? Um, and then we can make an assessment on uh, how much service life remains and then say, you have this much left, and if you want to make uh, you know a change or you want to extend the service life of this product, then we recommend you know several different items that could take you uh, another five, ten, or even fifteen years down the road. Sure. You know what types of buildings and structures do you typically work on and inspect? Yeah, so we look at a lot of uh, commercial office buildings. Uh, they range from one story to a hundred stories, and then we also have uh, a large segment of our business that is uh, residential. We do a lot of inspection work to extend the service life. Of of existing residential metal roofs. So once you make that inspection, you provide a report, what happens next? So once we provide the report, we're also including budgetary pricing for different options. Um, we can look at you know, extending a service, uh, service life of a roof five years, 10 years, or even 15 years. And so those uh, pricing variables are already be built into uh, providing you know, an inspection report to a homeowner, and then they can make consideration on you know, where do they wanna go with this roof before they maybe consider replacement in the future. Okay, and what pricing are we typically seeing when it comes to repainting? Yeah, uh, there's several variables within that, but the range is normally $4 to $8 a square foot, and ultimately it's gonna depend on the condition of the roof, the age of it typically, uh, and then the ultimate selection of the coating system, which varies in you know the price per square foot of how much uh, the actual material itself costs. Okay, so let's dive into the installation aspect a little bit. What does that look like when your company comes to do a restoration? Yeah, um, it's part of the inspection process and, and creating the you know budget pricing so people understand cost impact is looking at number one access. Do we have a lot of heavy pitches and slopes on a roof, which which is uh, becomes a challenge for uh, applying the material? Do we need to bring in access equipment such as boom lifts to get to some areas that are difficult, or again have a high pitch? Um, and then there's also uh, consideration for. Um, what we call fall protection equipment. So we're actually finding and hopefully getting to locations where we can tie off and have our men on safety ropes and so that they're secured on a homeowner's roof to make sure the work is done properly and there's no slip fall injuries um, 
as part of that process. Then we've already established a process and procedure based on a coding selection um, of, the, of the homeowner and client. Typically starts with the actual cleanliness of the roof. So we want to eliminate all contaminants, you know, anything that's up there on that rooftop, and that'll start with a low pressure wash uh, clean of the roof system. Past that, we have to look at existing conditions such as corrosion and, and rust. And when we see corrosion and rust, it's not enough to wash it. It's not enough to just primer paint over it because now you've left a, con a condition that can get worse over time. So we actually have to address what we call remediation of rust and corrosion, and that process will typically would be done by um, mechanically uh, sanding and removing the rust, but then we also have to quickly prime those surfaces that we just uh, cleaned and remediated of rust because what will happen is if it's left to sit for 12 to 24 hours, you have flash rust. Mm -hmm. So now your rust problems come back due to exposure to the air and the moisture that's going on. So once that remediation is done, you quickly spot prime areas that had raw substrate exposed, and then you can move on to the next step in the process, which is application of a primer system per the manufacturer's recommendations. There's a cure time um, that's involved with allowing that primer to properly set up, and that's typically 24 to 48 hours. Once that process is complete, we can then go to the final step, and that's application of the top coat uh, on top of the primer system. Do those steps carry through all the different coating types that we typically see? Yeah, at least from a professional in in installation from our end. Um, in a DIY situation, you may not um, you, you may not uh, choose to use a primer in a top coat. You may choose uh, direct to metal coating, also known as a DTM, which is readily available. But when we go to a professional installation, we're almost always going to recommend use a primer system, use a top coat. Um, that's going to give us the best performance and best service life of the new install. Yeah, tell me more about those professional products. We really play in, in two, two fields when we talk about new installs. Um, we're either going to use a, a polyurethane system, uh, which will, by the manufacturer's recommendation will be an epoxy primer system installed um, either brush and roll or a via spray application. 90% of the time we're doing it via spray application, mm -hmm. so we have um, the best possible aesthetic outcome. And then that top coat system is a polyurethane. Uh, depending on the geographical location of the install, you can expect 10 to 15 years uh, of service life on that. Um, that comes along with a 10-year warranty. The next uh, recommendation that we make is, is really the, the highest performing architectural coating system um, in the world when it comes to architectural metal, and that's called a fluoropolymer. Uh, a fluoropolymer system, um, in the simplest way to describe it, is one molecule away from Teflon. And so if you think about the characteristics of Teflon, how scratch resistant, uh, how chemical resistant it is, we always say, uh, imagine taking Teflon, pulverizing it, putting it in a can of paint. That's the kind of performance characteristics you get out of that system. When we, we do that installation, again, we have a primer system that the manufacturer's recommending. We make that install, and then we're gonna do the floor polymer top coat. The beauty of the floor polymer top coats is you can expect an extended service life of 15 to 25 years okay. on a field install. Um, so you're really getting you know, the best possible outcome um, or the best, certainly the most extended service life by selecting that system. Sure. What are some other considerations that you have you know, when you're uh, completing an installation? There's things that have to occur to make sure these warranties I'm referencing are going to be issued by the coating manufacturer. And that really starts with um, monitoring of environmental conditions. And when you monitor environmental conditions, there are parameters the coating manufacturer says you have to be within to do that. You have to monitor and make sure you have the right air temperature. You have to make sure it's not too cold or not too hot based on their parameters. You have to measure the surface temperature. This is also important, again, not too cold or not too hot. Uh, you also measure dew point and then relative humidity. So there's too much moisture in the air due to the dew point or even the humidity that's going on. That can actually affect the coating system because now you have moisture that's entering into a new system that you're trying to get to cure. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these coatings are um, very sensitive to that. Um, the other things we have to make sure we monitor uh, to have the warranties uh, issued by the manufacturers is the thickness of the coatings we're putting on, right? If we don't have enough primer or top coat or we have too much primer or top coat, we're again outside of the parameters of where they're comfortable to do warranty. So the way that we like to do that is um, by measuring dry film thickness. So once we've applied the primer system and it has cured to the touch, we can actually use um, equipment that we can measure the dry film thickness. And what that tells us is 
how thick have we put this new coating on, um, and does it meet the parameters? And then same thing on top coat. Once our top coat cures, we measure that process to make sure we we're within those parameters. We also log that in an inspection book that's then hand it back to the manufacturer so we can issue a warranty to the homeowner. I mean, what if you have something um, you know unforeseen come up in, in the middle of an install? You know, what, what do you do in situations like that? Yeah, that's part of what has to be built in into uh, a factor of um, you know pricing a project is, okay, if we're gonna do this work and we have a rainstorm and it ruins or messes up the install we did today, we have to come back the next day. There's a level of surface preparation that has to occur in order to make the install done the right way. Okay. And again, it's all about monitoring the conditions. We always say just because you have uh, technicians that are there that want to work doesn't mean they can that day, sure. right? You just have a rainy day or you have a foggy day. That's not a day for coating installation. Uh, and unfortunately, you just can't work and do that thing to be detrimental to the installation of the project. And you mentioned this before, but not all roofs are a simple design. Right. So how do you factor in, you know, a difficult roof, a cut up roof, something with a lot of flashing zones and, and things like that? Yeah, well, that's part of the inspection process is understanding the layout of the roof, uh, access to each specific area. Can we crawl around on this roof and do our application, you know, safely? Uh, are we going to require some sort of uh, boom lifts that are going to get us to these, you know, very difficult to reach areas? So all that's assessed in advance to make sure that upon arrival and mobilization, we're prepared to act access each, you know, area and region in the safest manner. So, you know, as we're looking at the end of the installation process, you know, how, what, are your do, what are you doing to wrap things up to finish off an install? Yeah, so obviously I said the last step of that process is, you know, the top coat application, but it's really not the last step. The last step is making sure everything is cleaned up and we've white gloved, you know, this property that there's no remaining uh, materials, uh, there's no remaining, you know, equipment, any of those things that are there. There's always a checkout process. Um, there's always a final inspection process of the roof that we self-perform to make sure everything was done in accordance. And ultimately we have uh, our logbook of our daily applications. Uh, all that information is then collected um, sent on to the coating manufacturers to issue warranties to the homeowner, and then we provide a closeout book of care and maintenance along with the warranty that was issued by the, the manufacturer. What is that care and maintenance look like? Typically, there's not a lot you have to do. There's a lot of what not to do's, right? Okay. So there's a lot of don't use this chemical, don't use this treatment, don't pressure wash it yourself because um, you don't want to add uh, high pressure to uh, a roofing coating system, whether it's done in the factory or the field. You want to low wash or soft wash these things. But the care and maintenance package is a lot of things not to do. Um, and then we typically recommend just a, a soft wash or even a rinse down um, every five years. What you uh, really want to avoid is being on your roof. Right, having your footprints on top of the roof, okay. adding oils to it. You want to kind of leave it alone. I mean, the goal of a metal roof is that it can be maintained on its own through a typical rain wash um, and not have to have a lot of care and maintenance. Uh, what else haven't we covered when it comes to your types of installs? Um, I think it's really critical when considering uh, selection of, of an installation or installer, I should say, is that there's a large difference between the uh, residential painter that paints your house, both exterior and interior, versus a commercial painter um, that not only is using uh, a quality assurance and quality control system um, done under protocols of a coating inspector, but they also have um, a substantial uh, book of project references. And they can show you roofs that were done, uh, the longevity of how long ago those roofs were done, and just have a track record of successful installs and a good reputation within the industry. If someone is interested uh, in your company, where can they find you? Uh, you can find us at uh, edgearc.com slash facade, or you can find me personally on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Well, I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. We'd love to answer them. Uh, check out Chris. As we mentioned, as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.